Hello, my name is Stuart Clark, and this is Dylan McLean and Stuart Clark's Feedback Final Project presentation. So we chose to do our project on power grid frequency regulation. And basically, the whole idea about this is trying to be the most efficient when you're distributing power in an AC system. And basically what that means is you want your required or load power to match how much you're generating. So due to the nature of AC power, when there's more load than generation, the frequency of the voltage and current sinusoids increase. So therefore, you can monitor this and adjust your generation system to more accurately match the load. Overall, the goal of this is just to balance the generated and loaded power. So we're going to define our inputs and outputs of this system because it's a single input, single output system. And the input is just going to be the difference between the power generated and the power required. The output of this system is going to be the new frequency to set to the generators to hopefully adjust and match the load and generated power. So our system model has a couple of parameters. Um, basically, on the right side of our equation, we have the mechanical generator power, PM, subtracted by the power drawn by the loads. So essentially, this right side of the equation is just going to give you the difference of these two powers, and that way it can be used to monitor the system. As you see, there's two coefficients, H and D, on the left side. H stands for the ratio of kinetic energy of the generators to the rated power. And these values are typically between 4 and 10, as given in the problem statement. D refers to the natural system damping, or generator damping, and is typically between 0 and 5. Omega, the variable, is going to be the nominal system frequency. The transfer function that we're interested in for this system is going to be the new output frequency over the difference in power. And by the difference in power, I mean what we have on the right side of the equation above, mechanical generated power minus the power drawn by loads. Also, it's worth noting that the parameters we chose for this system, H and D, are 4 and 5, and we'll discuss those later on. So here we have the step response of our grid frequency regulator in open loop on the left. And on the right, we have the frequency responses in both nominalized and normal units due to a 10% increase in power. So these all look relatively similar. And basically what you can see is that over time, there's going to be asymptotic behavior. All right. So if we were to va vary the values of H and D in the equation shown, for our plant below to the extremes, we would get a pole at either negative one over 20 or negative five eighths. Basically what this means is that no matter what we choose for these parameters, the open loop function is gonna have negative real poles and therefore the function is FIBO stable. On the bottom here, you can see our open loop diagram, which demonstrates how the system takes inputs in terms of the load requirement and gen current generator frequency and how it's going to output the new generator frequency. This system has no feedback or controller. OK, so now that we know a little bit about our open loop system, we want to think about what we can optimize with control. Some of these things are going to be the rise time, settling time, percent overshoot, and steady state error, which will all basically make our system respond fast and accurately to the input. Possible disturbances to keep in mind are going to be excess draws of energy, such as power surges, or the opposite of that when there's almost no load and extra generated power. There could also be a mechanical failure in the power distribution, such as a power line falling due to a storm, which would then require maintenance and cut off power to a certain area. So with these specifications in mind, our group decided that we were going to shoot for a rise time of less than or equal to one second. We, we figured that this would mean the system was responding reasonably fast to the input and would lead to less power loss. We also thought it was important for the response of the system to settle fairly quickly. And for this reason, we chose a settling time of less than or equal to 12 seconds. Our percent overshoot, we decided would be less than or equal to 5% as we wanted to keep this as small as possible, again, for efficiency reasons. Now, due to the fact that in power distribution, it's very 
expensive and you don't want to have extra power loss, we decided that we could have absolutely no steady state error. So due to the fact that we wanted no steady state error, we decided that PI control seemed most appropriate for our system. As you can see here, this generic model shows how the input of generator frequency will go through our PID controllers, will then be affected by the disturbance or load power, will then go through our open system plant with a feedback loop that then outputs the new generator frequency. So basically, this is just a generic model showing how the overall system is going to work with both our controller plant and the feedback loop. So now we have our closed loop feedback transfer function. This transfer function does not yet include the controller, but we thought it would be important to analyze our system without the controller to see how fast it was responding. As you can see, the system responded relatively fast with a rise time of approximately 5.16 seconds. This is when we chose the parameters H and D equal to four and one respectively. This did not meet our rise time goal, so we decided to try and modify our system somewhat before moving on to the controller. Here we changed H to equal four and D to equal five, which gave us one pole at S equals negative three fourths. On the right, you can see the statistics for rise time, settling time, and overshoot, showing that our closed loop feedback system has a decently fast response and we're ready to move on to the controller. So now we have the overall system transfer function, which this implements the entire block diagram from a couple slides ago with both the controller, plant, and feedback loop. It's important to understand why we used a feedback control solution for this project. And the main reason is because we had a system where the output depends on the previous output of the system. And what that means is that if you're gonna regulate the frequency of the generators generating power, you need to know what the current drawn load is and the current operating frequency of the generators. Because you need to monitor that information and relay it back into the system, that is why a feedback control solution is applicable. So now that we know why this was a good solution for our problem, let's look at the actual step response of our overall system. So here you can see we have a rise time of just under one second and no steady state error. This system matched all of our specifications and therefore appropriately solved our problem. On the right, you can see the pole zero map for our overall system. So in terms of the robustness analysis for our feedback control system, we had a phase margin of 108 degrees, as you can see on the Bode plot to the right, and an infinite gauge mar gain margin. Um, based on these values, we were able to calculate a maximum time delay of about 0.582 seconds, which seemed like a reasonable amount of delay for our system to be able to accept and still function as intended. Now the transfer function for this is shown in the bottom, and this is basically going to model the behavior of our controller. As you can see, we have a gain of 3.167, an integrator term, a zero at negative one, and a zero at negative 7.29. So when we were making this in MATLAB with the CISO tool, we used the root locus editor to change some specifications about the gain of our system to see that how that would play out in the response. And so on the left is our final root locus showing the poles and zeros. And you can see the region shaded in yellow due to the vertical line is from our settling time specification of less than 12 seconds. And the overshoot constraints are the other two lines. On the right is also a Nyquist diagram of our system, which is imp important for analyzing the stability. Because the Nyquist does not encircle negative one, that means Z is equal to zero, and our closed loop feedback system is gonna be BIBO stable due to the Nyquist stability theorem. Here are our references. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from our presentation.